Welcome back to Emotional Mojo and Food Therapy today. We're checking in with Thad, our weight loss challenger. Welcome back, Thad. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming back. All right, so let's look at your weight before we get into everything else. Your start weight was 261, and today's weight is 258. Yeah. Woohoo! All right, so three pounds so far. That's awesome. So last week, I gave you the assignment of eating breakfast because you weren't eating breakfast before. So how has that gone in the last week? It's going real well. It's going okay. real well. What are you eating for breakfast? Uh, start off with just a smoothie or a shake in the morning, waking up, uh, making okay. something with some protein. Uh, kale, spinach. Nice. Yeah. Did you see his face change when he said kale? It's <laughs> still something that is growing on me, but uh, doing that with a little bit of bananas, a little bit of... Uh, fruits in there so okay good so I mean what's, it doesn't look the best when you put the kale in it it really changes it into a green smoothie but it does it does it really taste that bad it's it's a desired taste for me it just for in the morning I the kale is kind of tangy I tangy? guess okay. and I'm not big on the tang but it's it's working All right, out well, we're well. getting some good fruits and veggies in yeah. you first thing in the morning all right so um, what I want you to do for this week, this is gonna be your assignment for this week, is going to be eating regular meals and snacks. So when we first talked, you're, you were doing what? In terms of how many meals were you eating a day? Maybe one, maybe two, if lucky, you know, a lunch and a dinner. Okay, so. so he was pretty much going a long time of the day without eating anything, which as you know, is not gonna be the best thing that we wanna do. So what I always recommend to people is to eat every two to four hours throughout the day. So what I want you to do is eat according to a schedule. We've already talked about breakfast. I want you to eat something, eat breakfast within an hour of getting up. And then I want you to eat something every two to four hours. So that's gonna require you to pay, plan and pack some snacks and meals throughout the day. So you're eating breakfast at about what time? Uh, that's usually around 6.30, 7 o'clock. 6.30, and then what time approximately is lunch? Lunch would probably be about 12.30, 1 o'clock. Okay, so we've got, you know, six-ish hours between breakfast and lunch, so that's going to be a good amount of time there. So what I want you to do is bring something with you, whether it's a banana, whether it's some yogurt and a little cooler, whether it's a granola bar or some kind of a protein bar, um, you know, some nuts. So something to, to tide you over until lunch, because what happens is when you get to lunch, then you're starving and then you're going to make bad choices. We're going to talk about lunch next week. That's okay. going to be your assignment next week. So we're going to hold off on giving you an assignment for lunch, but I just want to make sure you're eating lunch. And then what time is dinner? Dinner is usually around 9, 9.30. Okay. So 12.30 to 9.30, that's nine hours. So we definitely need to get probably two or three snacks in the afternoon. So again, okay. you're going to have to pack that. All right, Michelle, did you have a question for yeah, us? I'm curious, Fad, since you've started eating breakfast, have you noticed a difference throughout the day in how you feel, whether that's good or bad? Actually, uh, the energy level in the morning has been Awesome. Instead of feeling sluggish, lethargic like I did before, yeah. yep. um, actually after I drink that, I get to work and my mind's a little bit clear and I'm able to give out 100% energy first thing nice. in the morning. Nice! Well, and considering what your job is too as a delivery person, you're lifting heavy things and moving around, so you are kind of got that built-in exercise already. So I'm excited yep. to see the nutrition's kicking in. Yep, and I'm glad to feel the energy level back a little bit more in the morning instead of being that groggy, sluggish guy in the morning. Well, and the other thing that it does for you is it prevents you from eating too much at night. When you And that's my whole point with this assignment for this week is to get more food earlier in the day so that you're not coming home and opening those floodgates and eating too much. Okay. So, we're gonna do it? I'll do it. All right, so we'll check in with that again next week. All Michelle, right, back to you. Best of luck to you, thanks guys. So we are challenging you today to embrace your flaws and one blogger believes every body, no matter how big or small, is flawless. As a plus size woman in the fashion world, Gabby Fresh has had her fair share of haters, but after she saw Beyonce's music video for her song Flawless, Gabby Fresh knew she needed to create a video that showed all women that that they too are flawless. So now, take a look at the results. talk about some confidence. Yeah, I so, like yeah, I yes. love it. Gabby Fresh has basically said fat is not a flaw and she wanted to promote body positivity and inclusivity and she worked with other plus side fashionistas, um, Nadia Abelhosen and Tess Munster as a way of showing a united front against the negativity, negativity that yeah. comes with being plus size in the media. So it's not necessarily saying, you know, I'm going to stay this way or I don't want to be healthy. It's saying the way that I am, right. I'm happy with it. Right. And, and I'm not flawed. Right. Yeah. 
Right, and just from an emotional perspective, when we're able to accept ourselves just the way that we are, we clear the cloud of negativity, we clear the cloud of um, people projecting onto us what they think we should well, be. Well, you take the fuel away from the other people. If right. you're clearly okay with it, they have nothing to say to you. Exactly. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You're taking it away. It's right. empowering and you're saying, you know, this is who I am and I'm proud. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty cool video. Hey, it's time for you to be the problem solver. Holly in New Jersey writes, I'm 33 years old and finally came to the conclusion I just don't want kids. After years of my mother nagging me for grandkids, I just sat her down and broke the news to her. She got very upset, told me my life wouldn't have any real purpose in the end. I really think this is going to change our relationship. How can I make her understand I don't want children and don't need them to validate my existence. Wow. I don't know. Wow. I mean, we always wow. say to people, you can't change other people. I don't know mm -hmm. that you're ever going to get her no. to understand, unfortunately, but how no. can she keep it from ruining her relationship? This is going to be difficult because she is going to have to just recognize that her mom probably needs the kids to validate her. her. Yeah. But in the end, we have to look at our society. Years ago, remember, women were used for what? Protection. Childbearing. Yeah, right. childbearing. So she has that mindset. Today it is a little bit different. So she may never get her, her mom to change her mind. Right, and I think that she needs to say exactly that, that I don't need children to validate my existence. This is what I'm doing in my life, X, Y, Z, whatever it is that you do for a career, for volunteer, whatever it is that you're doing in your life that you're proud of, that's what you need to tell your mom that you're mm -hmm. so proud of. But I like yeah. that she's being clear about it. If she knows this is never going to change, it's better to do it this way than yeah. to kind of sugarcoat it like, well, I'm okay with it. This is where I'm right. at in my life. Because then mom's going to hold out hope with any guy you Never ever date. date. <laughs> you know, like, where are, are my grandchildren? Coming? So I think yeah. she's on the right track. And time, right? Yep. There's nothing you can do but give it yeah. time. Yeah, and have the conversation. Yeah. You guys really went to town on this one on our Facebook page. Here's what some of you had to say. Christy Myers says, sounds like she needs those kids to validate her existence. People who don't want kids shouldn't have them just because our society or family thinks they Agreed. should. And you shouldn't have to explain yourself either. Sherry Thompson says, it's smarter to know who you are and what you are capable of doing than blindly doing something simply because everyone is doing it or someone else wants you to ultimately you'll be the one with the child no amount of want from the world will make that existence better if it isn't coming from you and Sheila said tell your mom to become a foster mom or a big sister volunteer there are plenty of children out there who need love and attention and I just want to say people who claim it's selfish to choose not to have children I think mm -hmm. it's selfish to have them when and you don't, yeah, don't want, want them, them because the yeah. child is the one who's gonna suffer mm -hmm. yeah yes Exactly. And I was going to say that there are so many people who have kids that should not have kids, right? right? right. So, I mean, right. don't do it just because someone else says yeah. that you should. You'll well, and I love, I love that one person said, gave the mom, you know, <laughs> tips on how yeah. she should go and volunteer. So <laughs> She's that she the one who needs advice. Right, exactly. <laughs> hey, she is fixing lives and taking names. Oprah's go-to spiritual life coach, Ianla Van Zandt, is joining us later to help you embrace forgiveness. And speaking of Miss O, we are running down some of the best life lessons from her motivation series masterclass stay tuned you are watching emotional mojo we have 40 minutes left in our show you guys we want you to embrace one flaw before the show is over be flossom as awesome. we're saying today and we're going to rerun <laughs> the advice and the tips and the little things you can do to make that happen we'll be right back